is no exaggeration. There'd be times where he would full body cramp. So we went to a 707 tournament in Salina and it was in June. We get back to Sonic in Palo Point, I think. He's out of the car and he's just on the ground and he's just, his whole body is cramping from, 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 his, from his shoulders down his arms to his feet, you know, and he can't hardly move. And that just goes back to how hard he'd work, you know, and how much he'd put into it. I, I think it made him a really well-rounded player. You know, in our little small town, they've got extra jerseys on the sideline just in case. So Andy might be tied in one week and somebody on the line get hurt and he'd move the line or, or something to that effect. But it just makes you a good athlete to know more than one position, just kind of like it work. Yeah, I guess if you know how all the parts are working, it makes, under, makes you understand how your part fits in. There's one thing in common that I share with all my friends from high school, and that we all work. Um, you can't, you can't play 1A football and not work. In college, we everybody plays one way. You play one position, and you have to work really hard to be good at that one position. In high, in high school, where I come from, um, everybody has to play three, four, five positions. You know, around here, the, the the parents do a great job of teaching these young men how to work. I just take them and I try to mold them into a football player and then fortunately they work hard for me. But I think that comes from, from, from how they're raised. You know, these, these people around here, they work hard and uh, uh, they believe in working hard and they teach those kids from a young age, you know, how to work. Uh, so there's no doubt that it comes from his mom and dad. Uh, you know, the Felucia Enterprise where his dad works uh, six days a week. You know, it's never, it's never five. Uh, it's always Monday through Saturday. Uh, and they even find a Sunday when they're up there working. Uh, that's just how he's raised. And it's all these kids. It's not just Andy, it's all of them. It's not a whole lot to tell. Real small German town in Munster, Texas. Uh, everybody knows everybody. Um, two really small schools, two really prideful schools. Um, real prideful community in general. Yeah, I think he really likes the small town atmosphere. Everybody knows everybody. Most everybody is kinfolk in one way or another. But he just had a really tight group that he really hung around with. All of them played sports together. I had never driven on the inter interstate before I came to college. And so I had to get on I-35 to come to Denton, Texas. Uh, in Munster, Texas, you've got one red light. And in Denton, there's thousands of them. And I didn't really understand. I couldn't have understood the rules of driving on the road until I got to Denton, because I just never had to use any of them. Yeah, he said something about figuring out where all the one-way streets were was his first challenge. But I guess he's over it. Well, whenever I do take my friends to Munster, um, I like to uh, take and meet my friends first because um, my friends are their friends, how people are from Munster. You know, get to do stuff in rural Munster they don't get to do, you know, in Dallas or, you know, in bigger cities, areas like that. First place they do is go to our deer lease, which is about five miles away from here and it's right beside the golf course. And, and you take them to Romer's restaurant where they like to feed people very well. So if you, but, uh, I think he's proud of his little town and I think he likes to bring him here. It's a short trip and it doesn't take long, but I think he's happy to let people come come around and see. But I think they'll realize that when he, you know, whenever they get here, that it is just a little town, little simple place. But I guess that's just everything that he loves about it. He loves this town. I mean, he's, he's told me many a time this is where he wants to be, raise his family and, and grow old, you know. Well, uh, I started playing soccer whenever I was about five, I guess, and uh, my mom was our coach in Munster. We played in the Cook County Youth League, and so uh, my mom coached me and my friends in soccer. And then, and I think it was back then, it was like in second grade, kids started playing flag football. And so we started losing soccer kids to go play flag football. And I looked at my mom and she said, absolutely not. And so we played soccer, and uh, we were really good at soccer. We won the championship in fourth grade. And then in fifth grade, uh, I got to the point where, you know, my mom couldn't hold us back anymore. Um, you know, kind of every year, it kind of starts over. But, you know, once you get in that first game and that first tackle happens and everybody gets up, then it's kind of okay. But, um, you know, it's football. 
you know that there's always stuff that can happen, but you see that they can do it and it just goes on. It's fine. But it, yeah, every year I'm always glad to get that first hit out of the way, watch them get up, and then we just move on after that. Oh man, with Andy's shoot, just, uh, you know, I think we talked about it earlier, Andy's, first off for us, you know, of course his skills were outstanding. He was a very dominant small school football player, you know, so watching him play are some of my best memories, uh, but also his leadership. You know, I was mentioned earlier about when they were recruiting him, not only are you getting a great player, but you're getting a great leader, you know, and his work ethic was outstanding, so from that aspect on this field, we got a lot of wins. Andy was a part of a lot of them, and just special to watch him and, and special to have him around every day, uh, especially for the little kids and younger kids and, and starting what we started with our tradition. I was a starter my freshman year all the way through high school. Um, I actually hold the record at Munster for most consecutive starts on the football team. So um, high school was a, a really good time for me football-wise. It came really easy. I got really good at it, and it was a lot of fun. On this field right here, I'll tell you one. Uh, I believe it was his senior year, and we had played Monday the week before, and they had a fullback that weighed about 240. And he caught Andy in the thigh, and he caught him in the thigh over on the side where he didn't have a pad. Well, to be honest with you, we thought he broke his femur. You know, he had this just this huge knot. And he kept playing, he kept playing. We finally had to take him out. Uh, The next week, he had started every game, never missed a game. So the next week, he wanted to play against Petrolia. We well, wasn't supposed to. So we moved him from <laughs> middle linebacker to what we call our nasties, basically nose. <laughs> and I swear to you, this is no lie. He, we, we let him play a little bit so he could start, you know, because that's what he wanted. I think he had a quarterback sack, a forced fumble, and a return touchdown, maybe all within the first series. <laughs> so he just went, I mean, it was just unbelievable, you know, and that's what he was every, every game, you know. That's hard, because <laughs> I do, I love him to death. When you're in high school in Munster and you're doing well on the football field, you know, they're still writing stuff about you in the paper. You know, everybody's keeping up with everything you're doing. Um, and it just kind of never changes. So, you know, to continue doing that after high school, it's, it's a big deal. You know, watching him play at North Texas it, uh, every week, you know, it, it's just uh, it's, it's something that we take very, just we have a lot of pride in it, you know, here in Munster. And uh, you can see it from the little kids, what they wear over there in the elementary with their, with their green North Texas shirts on with 99 on the back. It's a, it's a huge responsibility, I think. People send me pictures of kids wearing Flushy 99 shirts at, at school, things like that. And uh, so we've got this big responsibility. We've got to, you know, do well and keep our nose clean, things like that. How can you not be proud of it? Coming from a small town and, and making it and playing Division One football, which was his dream. He had some offers to go play Division Two and so forth. He told me, Coach, he said, I want to play Division One. He said, and if North Texas is offering a preferred walk-on, he said, I'll go down there and earn a scholarship. On my official visit, they told me, drop two bombs on me. A, they wanted me to play defensive end, and B, they wanted me to walk on. And I'd already fallen in love with the team and everything around here. And uh, I'd already made up my mind at that point that I wanted to come here. So that was uh, a pill that I had to swallow. Oh, it's a, it was a little different. We went to Coach McCartney's house, and we went, actually went to his office, and he asked Andy, he said, can you put your hand in the dirt for me? He said, I just want to play football. He said, we want you to come there. And we got in the car and we was driving off. We was probably three or four blocks away. And I said, what do you think? He said, I think I want to play here. I said, call him up. That was the plan from the beginning. It was a year on walk-on. Um, I didn't really have a plan if I had not got put on scholarship after that first year. I remember that phone call. I mean, I think it was a, such a, a sweet relief because, you know, I felt like that for so long he just, you know, he knew when he got there because he's coming from a little school that he was going to have to prove himself. So that I remember he was very emotional that night when he called and it was a pretty great feeling. Very happy. Uh, on, in August of 2014, they put me on scholarship. I made the travel squad. Um, got to play in my first game against Texas 2014. Ash from under center, wing left, 
will uh, hand the ball off, and it's Gray, and he's met behind the line of scrimmage. Oh, what a play. Or it's Andy Flushy, 99. He's a redshirt freshman out of Munster, and they really like this kid. He can play tackle and defensive end. I think we can be successful right now this season. I think that in seasons to come, I think we can be even more successful with if we get all the guys that are local to come here. I think that we can take this program where it's never been before because there's so much talent in this area. I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, we've already decided we're going to keep some of our season tickets, maybe not 30 of them, but we, we plan to keep following it. We hope there's some more kids in this area. Because why would you not focus on some small school guys? Give them a shot if their work ethic's there, you know. Um, that's just my opinion. But no, I, I don't see any reason you couldn't, you couldn't recruit this area in that area around North Texas and be just as competitive as anybody. Yeah, I don't know why everybody doesn't want to do it. I mean, you know, it takes us about 40 minutes to get from here to Apogee, so it um, it is just so nice. I, I walk off the field, uh, I go back, I walk in the parking lot behind Victory Hall where my parents have their tailgate and there's still 40 people from Munster waiting on me just to, you know, just see me and hear from me after the game's over. It's great. I mean, just having all the different people, it's a fun day and it's a lot of fun to invite people to come and see that they have a good time and hear them say that they had a good time. That's a lot of fun. I really enjoy that. That's my comfort zone. I think he's turned into a, quite a man. I mean, very responsible, uh, very respectful to people that he meets. And he has to, the, he has to like take care of his daily life. I mean, there's no one taking care of his clothes. There's no one taking care of his house. There's no one taking care of the bills. He has to do all of that. So. He know, I mean, he's learned a lot about the world and living life also in the last four years, and I think he's handled it very well, but he learned that there, and I think it's been good for him. It makes me very proud. Not that I had a lot to do with it, but if I had anything to do with it, you know, just a little bit, it makes me proud. I know his mom and dad, you know, they raised him. They taught him to be who he is, but, uh, you know, as far as from a coach, man, it just, uh, it, it, it makes you super proud to know that you got to, to, to be around that kid every day and hopefully had a little bit of influence on him and now he's carrying on and, and doing great things at North Texas. It's kind of tough for me to narrow it down to one person or two people because there's so many people that have had a hand in my life. My mom and my dad have been the ultimate example setters for me. I mean, they've had so much impact on my life while still providing everything that I need. Um, and still being the backbone of our family. So if I had narrowed down two people, it's my mom and my dad. You know, I want, I want people from where I'm from to be here, you know. I want, that, I want this to become a destination for small town kids like me, because um, I think that, you know, I might be biased, but I think small town kids are the best uh, football players. But I would, I would love to be a part of something like that, you know. Mm -hmm.